Welcome back to Fallout. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. It has actually been a while since the last episode I recorded. See, uh, the last one that I recorded as of right now, today is the 25th of May, by the way. And the last episode that I recorded was episode 40, and that was on the 23rd of April. It's actually been a month since I've recorded an episode. You didn't notice it, did you? Yeah, that's because I was recording so much that I ended up uploading two episodes a week, and I've decided I want to not wait a month between recording episodes, so the frequency of uploads may change. In fact, by the time you see this, they may have already changed. <laughs> yeah. Just a moment. What is that noise? Well, that was weird. For some reason, my alarm clock, which, by the way, I never set and I never use, somehow got set. Apparently, I bumped it or whatever, and it ended up getting set somehow in the process. It's been so long since I've set the thing, I didn't even recognize what it sounded like. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? Anyway... So, you're probably seeing more fallout these days, and yeah. Anyway, I thought maybe that uh, I wanted to start on a thing that I had figured out. Is that I haven't been not playing fallout. I have, because I have a couple of other saves that I've been playing around with. Testing different ideas and so on, and figuring some things out. And... Uh, one of the thing is, the, uh, okay, it shows up here in the uh, workshop. There's the robot workbench and all that. But they're in the power tab. If I come over here, manufacturing. Yeah, this is part of the, uh, uh, one of the DLCs. And then there's a, mad, uh, a mod, manufacturing extended, that kind of extends expands it and fixes it a little bit and so on you know how it is with bethesda games modders you know they create something and modders come along and uh, make it better so there's something i want to do there with that and uh, i've decided that i want to do that over at the starlight drive-in because it's got a large area there's lots of room and i can build myself a factory over there yeah and so I think I'm going to do that. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a nice long trip because I'm going to go over here and I'm taking everything out of that workshop to go over there and do that. Now, obviously, I am once again overloaded, 5,000 pounds of stuff. And I'm going to uh, jump into one of these suits of power armor and walk it over there. And when I get there, we can start doing some stuff over at the Starlight Drive-In and getting something of a, a uh, factory going. So, I'm going to head over there and I'll catch up with you when I get there. Oh, I got over here, and there was a group of Rust Devils around uh, to welcome me, so I had to deal with that. And I've got some things sorted out. In the workshop, I have just junk items, and specifically, they fit in the junk category, but what these are are components. This is the stuff that things break down to, like, for example... Okay, hang on. That's a bad example. <laughs> if I look in here and items in the junk category. Okay, they're going to be up in here. I put all the actual junk items in here. Like adjustable wrench, it breaks down to steel and gear. A Braxo cleaner breaks down to acid, antiseptic, and fiberglass. Okay, the materials that those things break down to, I put in the workshop. Everything else junk wise is in there a lot of it <laughs> and 
I'm going to arrange to do a little something with that. It's going to make life easier for me because one of the things that I've had a problem with is knowing for sure whether I had enough material to do stuff with. And as for my choice of building here, well, if I go into workshop mode, you see why. Look at the size of this place. It's from just back there all the way up there to behind the screen and, and it encompasses, encompasses most of the parking lot. This is fantastic. So, I'm going to take some time and uh, scrap pretty much everything in the parking lot. This will give me a large quantity of steel to work with. And, yeah. And, like, for example, this body of water here. There's a radiation problem here. But if I go here and scrap those barrels, if I scrap the radiation barrels, no more rats. Well, you'd think... You'd think that... Uh, you'd get nuclear material out of them, but you don't. You'd also think that uh, if you had steel and nuclear material, you could make them, but I don't think you can. Okay, that's one of the bots with the rust devils. It'll despawn. But yeah, I'm going to get this parking lot all scrapped out. And uh, then start the beginnings of a factory situation. I'm not going to build the whole thing. In fact, right now, I'm just going to get the first bare part of it. It's not even going to have walls on most of it at first. Because I want to get the thing functional. And so, yeah. Well, I'm almost finished with the scrapping. So. But uh, certain things you can't scrap, which is kind of annoying... And so on, but yeah, okay. I think I've pretty much got it all. That's good enough. Uh, anyway, so if I go over here, let's see, power. No, just a second. Hang on here. Structures, wood, floors. Foundation. And go like that. I should not, I should turn off the jogging mode. See what I'm doing here. This is putting down some genuine serious flooring here, upon which to get some factory stuff going on. And this way I can later on put down walls and stuff. Come on. But what I should be able to do here once I get, let me get back up there. There we go. But the idea here is I should have no problem just 
filling in that place where the hole was. Yeah. Okay, I've run myself out of concrete, but that's good enough to get started. And I don't even need this whole thing right off the get-go. And in fact, I'm going to not even bother with walls right at the moment. All right, let's get over here and to power generators. Ah, screws, aluminum, and oh boy. Okay, I'm going to have to scrap, scrap up some of this stuff the old way. Let's see. All right, I'm going to get the materials I need out of here and get the first bits of stuff in place, and I'll be back. All right, let's get started here. I want to start with, uh, well, for one thing, knowing where I am over on that end. I don't want this thing be sticking off the end. All right, how about this? And I'm just going to build two of these off the start here. I will no doubt be needing more later. All right, now, go over here to manufacturing. Start with miscellaneous, and no, actually, let's go back. Go, go back up a notch here to furniture, containers. That'll work. It's going to look kind of odd, but I don't care. All right. We have a large bureau there, and that's just to be an input container. All right, now, manufacturing, miscellaneous, and I want a vacuum hopper. Okay, that requires six electric. Okay, now let's see, from the vacuum hopper, and what that's going to do, the vacuum hopper is going to do just like what it sounds, it's going to vacuum stuff out of that container and drop it on this conveyor belt. Okay. And now I want a sorter. And it looks like I'm short on the rubber supply. Crap. All right. I would have thought there'd be plenty more in there. It was a bunch of tires and stuff that I scrapped. All right. That's right. The junk stuff is all up here. I'll be back. All right. Hopefully, I've got my uh, sorting, my supply issues sorted out. We'll find out. All right now, here is sorted. And this is going to sort where incoming objects go based on what it's in its inventory. Basically, I want this thing to sort something out to this side. I'll put an example of it in there. And everything that isn't what that doesn't match what's in its inventory goes on down the conveyor to the next machine in the line, and that is going to be the recycler and the recycler is pretty much what it says on the tin recycle stuff 
and then everything that comes out of the recycler goes into the conveyor workshop storage which is going to be just like all the rest of the workshop things magically connected to the same inventory so everything that goes in there will take care of that now I just need to arrange for power lines because these machines need it uh, All right, uh -huh. I want a switch for turning this whole get up on and off. Street light. That ought to work. It's going to be good and tall. And it'll provide just what I need in the way of connectivity and lighting. See, connect the generators to each other and then to the light fixtures. Bingo. And now from this light fixture to that switched doohickey. And from this to that and to this, and, whoops, to that. All right, looks like all the belts are running, and the switch turns everything off and off, great. All right, next up, I need a container over here, so back into workshop mode. Furniture, containers, all right, it's goofy, oh, wait a minute, no, 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 not this, I don't need that, what I need, power, manufacturing, conveyor storage. That should take care of it. All right, now let me get some samples of what I'm talking about here. Uh, in fact, let's take all. Yeah, I know, I'm going to waddle, but it's in a good cause. The first thing I need to do is prime the sorter. There are certain things I want it to send to one side. So I go over here to the sorter and into its inventory I'm going to put one of those let's see antifreeze bottle I want it sending those to one side um, because the Abraxo cleaner it breaks down into the acid, antiseptic, and fiberglass, but it in itself is also an ingredient in things. So I don't want it going through the recycler or it'll get recycled. You know, that would not be optimal. Um, let's see. I don't even know if there's any in this, but I have to look real quick. I've got this weird idea of saving pre-war money. 
because if I leave it in here, it'll get scrapped out to cloth. Now, certain things need to go straight into the recycler because they are long and large and they present problems on the conveyor belt. And so, things like brooms, they have a long handle. So, 29 brooms into the recycler. Uh, fishing poles. Come on, don't tell me there isn't any fishing poles in here. Well, isn't that just a twitch? Fishing rod, there it is. There it is. Um, let's see, stew pots are too tall to go on the to go into the opening on the conveyor belt. So they'll have to be put in directly. But that's not too big a deal to do that. Normally you know, you're not handling this much scrap all at the same time. And by the way, I realize that I'm not necessarily expressing everything 100% A1 fantastically, but I do know what I'm trying to do here. Stew pots. All right. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe the rest of this stuff. I can just go ahead right over here. That's turned off good. Now all the rest of this stuff in the junk section. Just throw it in there. Every bit of it. And there's like 3,000 some pounds of it. And this initial processing run is going to take a while. And like I said, what's going to happen here the vacuum hopper will pull stuff out one item at a time run it down the conveyor belt the sorter will decide which things get to go straight on to this recycler and which things get to be sent to the side container and then when things go into the recycler it's going to recycle them down into the components that make it up you know like when the death claw hand goes in there it's going to come out as bone and leather you know, and that sort of thing. And there is a reason for that. And as soon as I finish hitting enter on this, I'll go into that. All right, everything's loaded in there. So let's start this sucker up. Conveyor belt starts running, vacuum hopper starts vacuum hoppering, and it's just pulling stuff out. If it's not one of these things, it goes on. If it is, it goes sent over there. And this thing is taking these items, the stuff that's in here, and it, everything in there gets broken down into its components. And over time, it gets spit out onto the belt, and this is sending it all directly into the workshop. Now, yes, it is, a, it is kind of a pain to have to uh, put things in here one item or stack at a time standing there pressing enter and yes I could just put it all into the workshop and have the vacuum hopper up against the workshop so that it would pull it all straight out of the workshop the problem is is that would create a uh, it would create a, a, a kind of a loop a circle where it would be pulling stuff out including these things which I don't need it to pull out or those are already broken down all this stuff is already broken down and the rest of this stuff getting broke down into that I don't want to create some kind of a goofy processing loop you know that that doesn't make any sense so this way everything and all the junk items I put it in there with the exception of a few things that I have to sort into this thing directly manually myself which is not a big deal and uh, yeah there is a huge backlog there's over 3,000 pounds of junk in that chest right there it's going to take a while to process it all out but once it does get processed out yeah that's great and one of the reasons for doing this is quite simply how many times you go to build something 
and you don't know if you've got enough of the stuff to make it because you've got all your junk in here in its native junk form. But having it all broke down, if I want to know if I have enough fertilizer to build something that uses fertilizer, I can look in here and see, hey, I've got 52 fertilizer. You know, I don't have to wonder, do I have this or that that breaks down into it? You know, I don't have to wonder, do I have this or that that breaks down into lead or nuclear material or oil or plastic or screws or springs or whatever, you know? I can look in here and I know I have it or I know I don't have it one way or the other because it's all broke down into its raw form. The wood blocks break them down into wood and they become useful. Otherwise, they're just junk and clutter that's going to sit there taking up space. But this, I think, is one of the most awesome things about uh, the DLC. I, I seriously, I love this. This is fantastic. I've been playing with this uh, in, in uh, a test save. And it is just freaking awesome to be able to do this. And yes, the initial run takes a while. And that's all right with me. I don't care. I can let this thing, I, you know, I can build some walls or some uh, stuff to keep things out and just let this thing go AFK and let it run for a while and process all that stuff. And here it's getting uh, adhesive. So it's breaking down Wonder Glue and duct tape and stuff like that getting the adhesive out of it yeah you see now you know how much adhesive there is you don't have to go and look do i have this much wonder glue or just or uh duct tape or what or vegetable starch or whatever else might break that break down to uh the uh adhesive because it's already broke down this is great. This is kind of like pre-chewed food for manufacturing. Yeah, I know. I actually said that. Pre-chewed food for manufacturing. <laughs> it, it works. You know, laugh if you want. I don't care. It's funny. Fine. But seriously, this is great. A nice, simple machine for breaking stuff down. The one thing that I have learned in my testing is that if I'm going to leave the area to where this whole place would unload, then I really need to shut this thing off and stop it. Because I've noticed that when it loads, if the thing is still running when it starts to load up, uh, it doesn't always play nice. And sometimes you find items scattered all over the floor around it or way down that way. There's one time I came back and I found uh, stacks of wood items and glass items, you know, like this, the glass and the wood, scattered for like 30 feet that way uh, off the end of this thing, and it was just a royal mess. And I figure it's got to be an issue with the thing running while it's loading. So turn it off when I leave the area, turn it on when I come back in and start putting stuff in it. Yeah. But that is the big deal. And I think really it is a big deal. You got all this stuff coming out of here, going through here, getting recycled. This is going to be a huge time saver. Yeah. And I just wish there was another machine that would take things like weapons, ammo, mods, and scrap them down. But those you still have to scrap manually. Well, with the exception of mods. You can't scrap mods. I've noticed that. With mods, you sell them. With weapons and armor, you can scrap them if you so desire. It just has to be manual. And I know there is a good argument for not scrapping those things, but take them out and sell them. And honestly, I'm going to be selling sometime very soon a whole lot of weapon and ammo, uh, weapon and armor type thing. No, excuse me, I don't sell ammo. That would be silly. Anyway, that's what's going on right now. The factory is in production, and yeah, lots of stuff coming out. And yeah, this is, this is very good. This is going to be extremely great. 
and it's going to see a lot of use going forward. In the meantime, I know I have rattled on and on and probably taken more time than I needed to to get this little bit of stuff built, but you know how it goes. Uh, things don't always go super smoothly when recording. You think you've got everything all organized and ready to go and then you get halfway through it and found out you forgot something. You know, it happens. We just deal with it and move on. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I am out of here.